What is matter to begin with? Matter is anything that has mass and volume. Mass is the quantity of matter or the measurement of matter. Volume is the amount of space something takes up. So we can also say that matter is anything that has weight and occupies space. For example, this avocado is considered matter because it has weight and takes up a certain amount of space. How about this girl and her laptop? Are they matter? Yes, the girl's made of matter, so is her laptop, and so is everything else attached to her. These plants are also made of matter. This ocean, the sand, and all the animals that are here, these are all made of matter. Almost everything you can think of is matter, but there are a few things that are not matter. Those things are forms of energy, like light, heat, and sound. So what is not matter are forms of energy. Like the sun rays that give off heat and light, these are not matter. Lightning and thunder give off forms of energy like light and sound, and these are not matter. They are forms of energy. There are properties of matter that you should be familiar with, and properties just means like characteristics. So these characteristics of matter are color, size, volume, density, boiling, melting point, solubility, reactivity, combustibility, flammability, and there really are more, but you get the point. So these can all be categorized as either a physical or chemical property, which we will be discussing later. Matter can be classified by its chemical composition, but also by its physical form. Physical form of matter is also called state of matter. I just like to use the word forms because I think it is a better interpretation of the concept. These are our three forms of matter or states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Keep in mind that two things determine the state of matter. In other words, determines if an object or substance is a solid, liquid, or gas. One is how far apart the molecules are from each other, and two is how fast these molecules are moving. So let's look at a solid first. Molecules in a solid are tightly packed and don't have much room to move around. In fact, they have no room to move around. Instead, they vibrate in place. Because they are vibrating, they still produce kinetic energy, just at a very low frequency. It is important to know that because the structure of a solid is rigid and does not have movement, solids have both a fixed shape and fixed volume. Liquid molecules are spaced out and have more room to move around and bump into each other. The kinetic energy of a liquid is more than a solid, but less than a gas. Liquids have a fixed volume, however, the shape is able to change and manipulate the volume depending on what container they are in. So if you had, for example, three different size cups and poured the same amount of water into all three of them, the volume remains the same because it takes up the exact same amount of space, but the shape of the liquid is now changed. In a gas, molecules are even more far apart and move around freely and quickly. Because the molecules have so much room to move far and quick, this creates a high kinetic energy within the gas. Kinda like if you had a gas held in a container tightly, then you open the container, the gas might explode out of the container rapidly because of all the kinetic energy it has. For example, helium is one gas that has the most kinetic energy. It's used to fill balloons. If you've ever seen the balloons get full of helium, you'll notice that they fill up very quickly. This is because the helium gas is coming out of the container at a rapid rate. These states of matter go through changes we call phase changes. When a gas turns into a solid, it's called deposition. Solid to a gas is called sublimation. Solid to a liquid is melting. Liquid to a solid is freezing. Liquid to a gas is evaporation or vaporization. And gas to a liquid is condensation. Both temperature and atmospheric pressure regulate the phase changes. In other words, temperature and pressure are the two important factors that cause phase changes. As temperature increases, atmospheric pressure decreases. And as temperature decreases, atmospheric pressure increases. 
So now let's compare a heating curve and a cooling curve, which show the correlation between both temperature and heat absorption. In a heating curve, we have solid liquid and gas going upwards. We have heat absorbed here. As we go more to the right, more heat is absorbed. And of course, if heat is absorbed by the molecules, it means that temperature is rising as well. Here we have the first phase change that turns solid to liquid, which is melting. During the phase change, you can see that the molecules are absorbing more heat and the temperature is rising. This causes the molecules to spread apart from each other and move freely. As we go from a liquid to a gas, in other words, vaporization, the molecules are absorbing even more heat and the temperature is increasing even more. This creates a sort of expansion and the, molecule, the molecules spread out even further from each other and they're basically able to move more freely and even more quickly than a liquid. Because the molecules are moving so quickly here, in a gas, the kinetic energy is very high. And of course, we can't forget solid to a gas is sublimation. So the molecules here are quickly going from vibrating in place to moving around freely and quickly. Again, just want to emphasize the main points on a heating curve during the phase changes including melting, vaporization, and sublimation. The main points are molecules absorb heat energy. This results in an increase in temperature. The increase in temperature causes cohesion to decrease. And by the way, cohesion means, or cohesion is kind of like the glue that keeps the molecules attached to one another. This decrease in cohesion lets the molecules spread apart from each other and move freely and quickly. So here's a quick visual of what the molecules would look like as you go up the heating curve from solid to liquid to gas. So remember, in a heating curve, molecules are absorbing heat and cohesion between molecules decreases. Now let's look at a cooling curve. In our cooling curve, the molecules are going to be releasing heat and this is what's going to make them cooler. So here we have condensation. During condensation, molecules are releasing heat and getting cooler. This cooling of the molecules makes them more compact and come closer together. During freezing, the molecules are even more cooler and they are releasing even more energy, heat energy, and they are even closer and now they're unable to move. So here the molecules vibrate in place. Lastly, we have deposition where molecules are quickly going from moving free and quick to not being able to move at all and they're stabilized and vibrating in place. During the phase changes of condensation, freezing, and deposition, molecules release energy resulting in a decrease in temperature. This decrease in temperature causes cohesion to increase between the molecules and it causes the molecules to come close together. As a result, they have no room to move. Here is a look at what the molecules would look like as they cool down from gas to a liquid and liquid to a solid. And just remember these three very important points from a cooling curve. The cooling curve involves gas, liquid, and solid going downwards as they cool off. Molecules are releasing heat here and there is an increase of cohesion between molecules as they cool off. And here's a side by side in case you want to compare the two. Basically, the heating curve and cooling curve, they are doing the opposite thing. Lastly, we're going to go over chemical composition. We begin here with matter at the top, and matter can be described as either a pure substance or a mixture. A pure substance has the same chemical composition throughout its sample, whereas a mixture has various compositions throughout its sample. A mixture consists of two or more pure substances combined. A pure substance can either be broken down into an element or a compound. An element is what you find on the periodic table. These cannot be broken down into any simpler substance, even by chemical reaction. A compound is a substance combined of two or more elements in definite proportion. Let's look at some examples of elements and turn them into some compounds. So here we have oxygen, hydrogen, sodium, and chlorine atoms. These are all in their purest, most simplest form, their elemental form. 
now we can combine these elements to make compounds. So if we combine hydrogen and oxygen, we can make H2O. If we combine sodium and chlorine, we can make sodium chloride. So remember that a mixture is two or more substances mixed together. In a homogeneous mixture, the composition remains the same in the entire sample. Or we can say that the composition is uniform throughout the sample. Also, there are no distinct boundaries, meaning you cannot easily see the substance separate from each other. Instead, all the substances are blended together. In a heterogeneous mixture, the composition varies and there are distinct boundaries. In other words, you can clearly see a boundary line separating the substances. An example of a homogeneous mixture is salt water. If we mix salt and water in a cup, the substances blend in together so we see a uniform composition and there is no clear boundary line between salt and water. But if we take a magnified look, we can clearly see salt molecules and water molecules separate. Remember, what makes this a mixture is that we have two pure substances. In this case, salt is an element, which is a pure substance, and water is a compound, which is also a pure substance. Two pure substances combined together makes this a mixture. And what makes it homogeneous is the appearance of the substance is uniform. An example of heterogeneous mixture would be oil and water. Let's say here we have some boiling water and we add some oil inside. Eventually the oil and the water will separate because they don't mix. Oil will stay at the surface and water at the bottom. We can clearly see the boundary line between the two substances. That makes this heterogeneous. I want to remind you that what makes this a mixture is that we again have two pure substances combined together in one substance. The substance is everything in the pot, the oil is a compound which is a pure substance, and the water is a compound which is a pure substance as well. Alrighty everyone, that concludes this video. I hope you learned something new. Thank you for sticking around and until next time.